DJ. Yes, sir. Bet on black in 2024. We're going to bring in, we're going to bring in a special <laughs> guest. We're going to bring in a special guest, and I really thank her because I got a call from. Let, let's bring Marsha in, Miss Mar, Sister Marsha, who's calling out of Florida. Right? Brother, uh, National Prison Reform Minister Abdullah Muhammad hit me earlier today about the case of this sister in Florida and her son who was incarcerated. I'm saying brothers and sisters got jiggity jammity. If we don't feel the pain of one another, mm. if we are not determined to stand together and support one another, it's not good. Because our unity, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said our unity, I believe he said it's more powerful than a nuclear wow. weapon. Yes. So, That's right. Sister Marsha, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you, Sister, for making yourself available. This is Brother Naba. We also have on the line my co-host, B.J. Murphy, who is a Black Radio Hall of Fame member. Yes, and sir. we have James G. Muhammad, who was a former Final Call Editor-in-Chief, contributing editor, and a consummate media professional. Sister Marsha, share the story with our listeners about what you've been going through for the last six years. I want you to listen to this, brothers and sisters, please. Um, okay, so I, I am, of course, representing my son, Cameron McIntyre. Um, my son who was 19 when this started. He is soon to be 26. Um, he was um, in a car, uh, long story short, he was in a car with his best friend, um, and his best friend was uh, selling weed or something to someone, and the gentleman shot his best friend and murdered him. Oh, wow. Um, he was, everyone that was in the car was charged with that murder. Um, my son had gone to college on three scholarships and was actually sitting in his, his college class when they came to arrest him for, for the murder. Where, where, um, where are you calling from, Sister Marsha? Where are you calling from? I'm in Jacksonville, Florida. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, and so fast forward, we go through that whole process of him being incarcerated for years and us paying all of these attorneys and all of that, and uh, the attorney told us that he would get a first-time offender uh, program um, if he pled guilty, um, and we were against it because we knew he wasn't guilty, and so, you know, for the victim's family, he said, Ma, I just want this to be over. The first-time offenders program would have given him nine years um, in prison. He had already, at that time, and had already been close to five and he would be coming home soon. So he took the plea um, and got in front of the judge, and the judge gave him 20 years. We began to do the appeal process, but in, during the appeal process, um, right before my son took the plea, he called me and said that they had given him a shot in his arm. He was not feeling well, and that, um, you know, he was getting sick. So I began to call the jail you know, tell them he needs some help, you know, what's going on, you guys gave him a shot. Well, then I got a call from an inmate that my son passed out in the cell. I, I went down to the jail at that point and was demanding for someone to help, find out what's going on, and he told me all they did was gave him ibuprofen. After he was sentenced, they shipped him off to Wakulla Prison in Florida, and he rapidly started declining. Um, every weekend we would go visit him. He started losing weight. He went from 180 pounds to 98 pounds. Um, the guards started to have to push him in a wheelchair. I literally called the prison 236 times to get them to get, get him some better medical attention, and they refused to. Um, I got a call from one of the lieutenants from the jail, from the prison, and um, he said to me, if you don't get your son some help, he's going to die. Mm. And so the next morning, I got up, 
God told me to post a post on Facebook, and I did. And I, I put the prison number, and I said, I need everyone to share this post. Can we please start flooding the prison with phone calls? And the prison started getting thousands of phone calls. And so they agreed to rush him to a hospital in Tallahassee, but by then it was too late. He had TB, and it had taken over his body um, and spread throughout his body. During the time, my son found a lump in his testicle, and he called and told me about the lump. Um, I called the administrator. I'm calling the doctors. They told me that my son had an STD. Um, and I said, what do you mean an STD? So my son called home. He was crying. He said, Mom, not gay. I've never been with a man. They're lying. Um, well, once he got to the hospital, they tried to tell me that my son had cancer in his testicle. And I said, no, he does not have cancer. And they told me um, they needed to remove his testicle and castrate him. Mm. I told them no. Um, they told me basically... I, he was a property of the state. I really didn't have a say so. Um, and then they castrated him only to call me back a week later to let me know that it was never cancer. It was a part of the TB. Oh. So they castrated him for nothing. Um, oh. Long story short, once they released him from the hospital with the TB regimen back to the prison on December 16th of last year, the prison never gave him his medicine. So he had to be rushed back to the hospital um, on December 31st. He was found unresponsive and had to be rushed back to the hospital because he never got his medication. And um, he was in ICU. I then had a, his baby brother who was in Jacksonville, Florida, at the same time in ICU because he was shot 10 times trying to save some kids leaving football practice. Um, someone randomly starts shooting, and he shielded the kids to, um, you know, took the, took the bullets for the kids. And so I was literally driving from one ICU to another one three hours away, and the doctor in Jacksonville heard about my son's case and requested he be moved to Jacksonville, and they did. He was in the hospital maybe eight months, and then... They, once they got the TB under control, they released him back to the prison system. And once he got there, again, he felt very ill again. Now he's ha he has, they said, so many lesions on his brain that they can't count. He has a mask mm. on his brain, and he's paralyzed. He had a stroke during the process, so he's paralyzed in a wheelchair. Um, and the, the doctor in the prison basically said, we can't, we can't take care of him. Like, we have no, uh, not enough resources to take care of him. So they put in for medical compassionate relief, and the state of Florida rejected it. Oh, and my denied. God. So. Sister uh, um, Marsha, I'm sorry. Marcia. I don't, I don't want to uh, interrupt you, but we got about maybe three more minutes. Yeah, I guess but you that was it. That was the story. So at this point, what can we do to help you and to support Cameron? I'm just trying to get it out the word out there. Yeah. I got to get him home so I can get him the you proper gotta, let's medical. Bring, assistance. Let's bring Cameron home. Yes. Let's bring Cameron home. Well, Sister Marsha, I really want to thank you, brothers and sisters. Did you hear this, Mother? You hear yes, this mother and, and what she has done for her son? What's her Facebook her page, Yeah, Yes, Sister Marsha, you have a Facebook page? I do. Oh, it's how, Mar how do you what's, your, what's your Facebook page? It's Marsha McIntyre Lowe. Okay, and how do we help you? How do we get in touch with you? Yeah, that's my Facebook page. They can message me. I, you know, I really don't even know what the next steps are other than getting this out he, there as much as I can. Spell, to, I'm sorry. Spell your your first name is Marsha. M A R S H A. M -A -R -S -H -A. Spell mm -hmm. your second name. M C I N T Y R E. And your last name. L O W E. And so we will uh, we will get that out. As best we can, and Sister Marsha, brothers and sisters, I just heard about this earlier today, so we were able to connect 
Thanks to Good. Brother Zachariah with the prison ministry in Florida, in Miami, the regional city. And thanks to our national prison reform minister. So, Sister Marsha, inshallah, we will bring you back next week. Okay. Because, brothers and sisters, I went to college. I've been in the car with people that bought weed. Yep. Mm-hmm. I've been in the car with people that bought weed. I mean, I want to say the weed smoker, but I was there, but I was just trying to get to the party, man. They had to get their joints. Oh, hey, let's go. <laughs> exactly. My point is, brothers and sisters, this is what I'm saying about us and us caring for one another. Listen to what this mother said about her son. Yeah. Listen to the lies from the lawyer. Look at the heartlessness of the judge. We got a man now that was convicted in, in connection with the death of Elijah McClain, a white man in Aurora, California, who's going to be sentenced this Friday. He's going to do, I'm telling you right now, he's going to do less time in that death than her son has done. Brothers and sisters, Bet on black in 2024 and let your slave master right. go. Sister Marsha, thank you. Thank you. So now remember, we got to connect. And Brother BJ, I got to connect with our super producer, Sister Jeanette, to see what yes, we sir. got scheduled for next week. But we got to get Sister Marsha on at least for uh, at least for 30 minutes, you know. Yes, sir. This, they made that happen, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, sister, thank you. And again, like I said to you earlier, we don't want nothing from you. You ain't got to do nothing for us. It is our honor and pleasure and duty to serve you. We are those who follow Farrakhan. And that's why they hate him, brothers and sisters. They hate him because he loves you. Right, right. And he's teaching others to love themselves and love you. Oh, BJ, we got two minutes, man. Do your thing and take us to the top. Sister Marsha, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, sister. <laughs> and once again, brothers and sisters, y'all want to get in contact with our beautiful sister, Marsha McIntyre Lowe on Facebook. That's Marsha McIntyre Lowe on Facebook. All right, we made the case this first hour, brother. We're back for the new year, and you can tell we're full of fire. Brother Nabaz in the studio, Brother James G. Muhammad. We got our panel coming up next hour, and y'all can support us. You want to keep this fire going? Let's keep the love light burning. Make a cash donation on Cash App, dollar sign straight words, dollar sign straight words on Cash App. You can hit us up on Zelle. Make your best donation at 312-480-9775. That's 312-480-9775. And also on PayPal, the email is straight words, the number four at gmail.com. That's straight words, the number four at gmail.com. Thank y'all, brothers and sisters, for tuning in. This is Straight Words. We'll be on until midnight tonight, right here, Central Time, in the city of Chicago, WVON 1690. Taking you to the top of the hour. Next hour, we got our sisters panel, the Black Sisters Roundtable. These are journalists of the highest degree. They're going to talk about 2023 and 2024 coming up on WBON 1690, the talk of Chicago and straight words. The talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation is 1690 WBON, Berwyn, Chicago.